there, this is Tamara. I uh, wanted to share something with you that I uh, was watching a documentary on PBS with my husband uh, last night and this uh, one particular person like really intrigued me. They were talking about uh, different people in history who helped basically uh, start Chicago and different things that were going on as far as our uh, lakefront and retailing and stuff like that. So there was a gentleman by the name of Potter Palmer who they talked about. And Potter Palmer was a dry goods uh, retail and also a big real estate um, tycoon in the Chicagoland area. And he was responsible for a lot of the uh, State Street stores that right now is really famous in Chicago for a shopping district. But just, there were some things that really like, I was like, wow. So I thought I'd share it. And he actually started some stuff that actually traveled around the world. So Mr. Potter Palmer, basically, again, I said he was a dry goods store person, and he was, unlike most stores um, of the time, he focused on women and encouraged their patronage. And so Palmer instituted a no-questions-asked returns policy and allowed customers to take goods home to inspect them before purchasing them. Major, right? Which served to nurture the goodwill and patronage of the Chicagoans. So he made the store much larger and more distinctive than other stores of the time. And Palmer was the first owner to advertise with large window displays that included price comparisons. So he was a revolutionary person. He revolutionized some things. So when Palmer's doctor urged him to get out of the business back in 1865 because of his ill health, he brought in his partners Marshall Field and Levi Leader. And so the trio, they joined forces and renamed the firm Field, Palmer, Leader & Company. And so the store eventually developed into the prominent Midwestern department store chain, which maybe I'm quite sure most of you all have heard about, used to be called Marshall Fields, which is now basically Macy's. But Marshall Fields was in business for over 100 years. And so in uh, 1867, Palmer sold to share the partnership, and he focused his efforts on his real estate interests, which he was leasing new buildings to his former partners in, the, uh, eight, in 1868 at State in Washington. And so he helped, again, develop, you know, a lot of everything going on in State Street. But one thing that really, really intrigued me about him was he married um, a lady by the name of Bertha Horn, and they had children. But in his will, he, well, Bertha lived a lavish, lavish lifestyle. He had built mansions for her and, you know, all kinds of things, and she was just up there. In his will, he left money for Bertha's next husband whom she would marry so that she could continue to live that lavish lifestyle so that her new husband would be able to take care of her. Yes, current husband left in his will money for the second husband to come after his death. Never heard of. But anyway, I just thought that was uh, something I would share with you guys. I love it. Great idea, right? But anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. A little history, a little history about Chicago and about some things that will start as far as return policies and, you know, things like that. So, just wanted to share it. Again, I love sharing. Sharing is caring. So, do you love sharing things? Would you like to start getting paid for it? We'll go to http colon forward slash forward slash blog dot make money with dot com. And you can go there and you can check out my blog. But if you go to http colon forward slash forward slash www.makemoneywithtam.com go there, plug in your email address and you'll get the information on how to make money for sharing things that you love or just you think it's funny or whatever whatever you want to share ah. <laughs> see you in the next post, peace